Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Tuesday of the month, which means it's time for Tuesday with Thomas, none other than Thomas Allen, also known as Tommy Balsamic, the CEO of my favorite balsamic vinegar, California Balsamic, where if you put my name, Chef AJ, in the order notes, you get two free small 1.6 ounce samples in the flavor of your choice. Now, today we are going to be featuring recipes sent in by the viewers of a wonderful flavor called garlic dill mustard seed. Now, if you get a flavor like this, you notice there's some herbs and spices at the top. They use real stuff, not just flavorings. You got to watch that video we did, which teaches you how to shake this stuff up and get rid of that plug because you want it to disperse evenly. So if you're unfamiliar with California balsamic, please check out their wonderful products. They are SOS free, at least the vinegar, and I can't vouch for the oil being uh, oil free. That wouldn't make sense, but they are delicious and they come in so many flavors and they will really be a game changer if you're somebody struggling to eat more vegetables. Please welcome my friend all the way from Ukiah, California, Tommy Balsamic. Good afternoon, Chef. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. And everybody wants to know, yes, it's bowling night. So we're very excited about that. Now, the flavor this month is our garden dill mustard seed. There's no garlic in it. It's garden dill mustard seed. And when uh, and what uh, Chef AJ was talking about, uh, thank you, Chef, for mentioning about shaking this bad boy up because it is really tricky to do that. There are so many herbs in here of the of the fresh dill and the mustard seed powder. And in the video that's on the Chef's site, we talk about how to shake it up. And it's many quick little bursts like this to blend up and get this all blended like that. That's the key. And if there's a little plug of herbs at the top, take a toothpick and stir it up. They'll drop down, close the lid again and shake it one more time. So that's a that in a nutshell. So we've got three really nice recipes, but we need some color on our table here. Oh, my darling bride, Ethel, has got some. There we are. There she is. These are the flowers right from our backyard that uh, we made up here. There. So thank you, my darling. So um, let's see. Uh, any news going on, Chef, right now? I don't know. think of anything that's going on newsworthy. Uh, there's no new flavors for us. Uh, in the near future, although um, we're working on uh, a couple of things um, and we're looking to try to, we keep getting requests for organic balsamic. So we're really trying to find something that's organic because just so many people are asking about it. And if we can find it, fantastic. But till then, with the search continues. But it's, now, it's from, it's from the, Italy and, and like they have different standards and practices. So I would imagine it's pretty great now the the organic is just going to be from a dramatically smaller vineyard simply because most vineyards use some kind of pesticides to keep the bugs and whatnot out of it and uh, uh so that's why there's so little organic uh balsamic out there on the market right now i've never seen it in a any store chef have you ever seen an organic balsamic out there you know i might have but i don't know if it's a really good one like the thick reduced one you know yeah uh, I, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking that it's going to be really thick, rich, and sweet, you know, but who knows? So as soon as we find something, we'll, we'll make a, we'll mention it here and, and go from there. But um, for as far as today's uh, recipes go, we've got um, the garden dill mustard seed, and we have uh, five recipes, although we're only going to feature three of them. And thank you for those of you who sent in the recipes. We have a couple of, uh, honorary mention recipes, one of them uh, from Eileen, who did a cauliflower crunch with just basically some raw cauliflower in a jar with some uh, dill mustard seed in it. And she just leaves it in small pieces and takes out a little piece whenever she needs a snack. That recipe is on our, our website now uh, under the recipe page. And Denise Bull sent us a nice recipe uh, for a um, garden dill mustard seed balsamic recipe with uh, fresh uh, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, and the garden dill mustard seed. So really simple. That recipe is on our site too. So thank you, Denise. 
Well, now, Thomas, you know, I first started using garden dill mustard just by just to marinate pickles, especially the little Persian ones. And that's, I call them quickles. <laughs> Chef, you are still funny to this day. Quickles. <laughs> All right. You got to, you got to trademark that. Well, because they're quick pickles there and they don't have any salt in them and you just, they're delicious. Right. I imagine if you had them on the court, they'd be play quickle ball with it, but maybe, maybe <laughs> that's not the same thing. <laughs> Aren't you funny? I take after you, Chef. I'm going to get back into that comedy class here one day. Hey, I didn't, I don't think that I mentioned that one of our students in the class, um, Gina, came to the festival last weekend in um, Sunnyvale and introduced herself. So we actually had a chance to chat, which was a lot She's of fun. Great. So. She came to the Sacramento Veg Fest that I spoke at a few weeks oh, ago. Herself. She's fantastic. Yep. I, Gina, I hope you're watching right now. Thank you for introducing yourself. It was a pleasure meeting you in, in person. So um, today's first recipe is a really pretty one here because it's got beets in it. And I just love that. It's called Can't Beet Dill Mustard Potato Salad from Alan Wald and Carolyn Bass, also known as CB. Thank you, Carolyn. I love your initials. And it goes like this. It's a pound of small potatoes. And she said, we used red, purple, and Yukon. A celery stalk, a small red beet, a small red onion, a tablespoon of prepared mustard. She used an unsalted stone ground one. A tablespoon of prepared horseradish, two tablespoons of garden dill mustard seed, and a smoked paprika is optional. So it started off by cooking and then dicing the potatoes, and then she actually roasted them, uh, diced the celery, cook, peel, and then dice the beet, uh, chop the onion, add the mustard, add the horseradish, then the garden dill mustard seed, mix it all in a bowl, sprinkle with the smoked paprika if you like, and then chill it. It's nice. Better. Now, in this recipe, Ethel and I, were a little... Uh, sensitive to raw onions, you know, gives us some heartburn occasionally. So we lightly sauteed uh, in water the onions just because it, they wouldn't be so strong. And so that's what we did for that one. And the mustard that we used, uh, we didn't have any stone ground, but we used Gary's uh, Primo's uh, garlic mustard. So that's the one we, we like to use as well. And you find that at primos.com. And um, let's see, at, it, <laughs> at the end of it that she says, uh, and this is way cute, Carolyn, add a tablespoon of love and a tablespoon of gratitude and voila. <laughs> and here's the, the finished, finished product here. And it's such a lovely or beautiful color because of the beets. No, I thought uh, that was a strawberry pie. Yep. <laughs> and, and it's actually potato salad with the garden dill mustard seed. And it's absolutely delicious. We made that last night so we could chill it overnight and enjoyed it last night and again today for lunch. So it's a wonderful recipe. So thank you both, Alan and Carolyn. You'll both be getting two eight ounce bottles of uh, whatever flavor you want for um, sending us your recipe and us using it on the air. So thank you so much for that. Okay, that's numero uno. And the uh, second one is our salad. And uh, it's called uh, simply a garden dill mustard seed salad. And this is from uh, Eileen Mirsky, same young lady who gave us the um, cucumber crunch uh, or cauliflower crunch. And the ingredients, two tablespoons of raw unsalted pumpkin seed, uh, two ounces of chopped romaine lettuce, one ounce of chopped Lasciato kale, chef. Have you heard of that one? Is it Lacinto or Lacinato? I never know how to pronounce well, it. Well, uh, this one is spelled Lacinato, but it might be Lacinto. Uh, I'm not absolutely positive on that. That's the first time I've seen it. And, uh, and she said it was also called uh, Tuscan or dinosaur kale. All right. Well, that's easy. Um, yep. Uh, a tablespoon of the garden dill mustard seed balsamic, five slices. Not four, not six, but five <laughs> slices of cucumber, uh, one tablespoon of seedless grapes cut in half, 
uh, a quarter cup of cooked farro. I love farro in salads. It just gives it that wonderful texture. And optional is a tablespoon of cilantro. I will not be using cilantro. I do not have the cilantro gene in my DNA. And I do not like cilantro, Sam, I am. So, but I know there's lots of cilantro lovers out there. That's why we make cilantro balsamic. Now, the directions. Roast the pumpkin seeds at 375 until they turn uh, from green to a golden brown, about 10 minutes. Set aside to cool. Drizzle a tablespoon of the garden dill mustard seed dressing over the kale and romaine lettuce. Mix it well so that each piece is lightly coated. Add the remaining ingredients, including the cooled pumpkin seed, toss and enjoy. Now here's a whole bunch of notes that, and I love it when people give options. Um, so feel free to substitute arugula or regular kale for the lacinato kale. You can use dried cranberries instead of the grapes, wheat berries or barley for the farro, uh, California balsamic simply lemon instead of the dill mustard seed, no problem with that. And if regular kale is used, it will need to be chopped into very small pieces because it is not as tender as the lasciato kale is. This, sal this salad has a nice variety of colors, tastes, and textures. The light green sweet romaine lettuce contrasts nicely with the dark green slightly bitter kale. The farro adds a chewy texture, the cucumber gives it a crispy crunch, and the grapes provide a visual contrast and a delightful sweetness. Roasting the pumpkin seeds transforms their color, taste, and texture. The sweet and savory flavor bursts from the garden dill mustard seed balsamic, ties it all together, and sets this salad apart. Wonderful. Eileen, you rock, young woman. And here it is as we speak. So that's a little appetizer for you, chef. I know you can eat twice as much as that because I saw you when, when we enjoyed dinner at your place a few weeks ago, that was a mountain of salad and delicious lasagna you made. Thank you for doing oh, that. My God, I hope you'll come again and I hope Ethel will join us this time. Hey, and I know um, she wants to. There is a question from a live viewer named Brenda. Thomas, can you tell me how balsamic vinegar and white vinegar and apple cider vinegar are made and how are they different? Okay, now dark balsamic and white balsamic is simply like dark, uh, like red wine and white wine. They're simply the grape skins. And then the young Patrick left uh, in the order notes uh, or in the chat room. I can't hear uh, Patrick, you now. Oh. My sound went away. Oh, we don't want that. I hear you fine, Chef. Good. Um, you're fine now. Sorry about that. There. Good. So um, we uh, so red, uh, um, dark red Trebbiano grapes and the light green Spergola grapes that are grown all over Europe. The green grapes, um, when you crush grapes, the liquid is clear, and dark grape, dark grapes, the liquid is clear still. And red wine is red because the dark red skins are left in the barrels during the fermentation process. The same general um, uh, activity happens when you boil the juice, the grape juice when it's fresh, they boil it down by 50%. During the boiling process, there are no skins left in with the, from the green grapes. The dark red grapes are left, the skins are left in the vat during the boiling process. And while the red skins are in the vat during the boiling process, the liquid turns black. Hence, you've got dark balsamic that way and a white balsamic and a clear balsamic using the juice from the green skin grapes. Now, apple cider vinegar, I haven't the faintest idea how that's made. But in general, it's going to be done the same way, but from apples and um, and and you've got uh, rice wine vinegar and apple cider vinegar, all made from the fruit, distilled, and it's tart as can be, but with very few calories and wonderfully good for you. So if you really want to pucker power the rice wine and the apple cider, but um, our balsamic is a 25 star, which gives it a dramatically thicker, richer, and sweeter uh, taste and texture to ours. I hope that helped. 
When you buy just Heinz white vinegar, which you know a lot of people use for cleaning, what what is that? That's a good question because white distilled vinegar is what I use to pour into water, and I clean my grandmother's windows uh, in spring and fall for my entire childhood, and we always used vinegar, and that's the only what vinegar to me was only to wash windows with. I had no idea. I didn't have balsamic vinegar until I was 40 years old. So I was missing out for a long time. Yep, so that's the way it was. But now, oh, I love balsamic vinegar now. Thank you very much. I just don't get people that don't like it. It's so, it makes everything taste better. Oh, I agree. Uh, And it's so healthy for you. That's the beauty about it. It's just so healthy. So thank good. And who said hi? Rita Rita said hi. Thank you, Rita. (laughs) Rita has made a whole boatload of recipes for us over the years. So thank you, Rita. Now, back to our story. The continuing saga continues. Um, We had, I had just moved to Ukiah and after one year of running the business, it was a disaster, chef. I mean, of biblical proportions. Everything went wrong. We had four distributors and hundreds of stores carrying our products. And after one year, we had a handful, seven or eight stores only, no distributors, no um, sales team. They left uh, to use a different product. And I was in massive trouble. And my dad was giving me the classic, I told you not to go into a business because you really didn't know anything about. And I just said, well, I'm going to figure this out eventually. And um, I had cashed in my IRAs. I had two IRAs. I cashed those in, of course, with the penalty that comes involved. I was so cash poor and the business was barely surviving. Um, We were going to the fancy food shows with there's one in New York and one in, uh, in San Francisco. And we've been a member and the original owners were going every year getting new stores and whatnot. And I couldn't afford to go, but I went anyway. And we got somebody who bought a couple hundred cases of flavors that I thought were just not our best. And that was, uh, and that was the only orders I got. So we were losing money like crazy. And there was an East Coast broker who told me that they had purchased $10,000 worth of our products the year before, just before I had taken over the business. And that the the stores wanted their money back. And I didn't know what to do. It was near six, $7,000 and I didn't have it. And they said, if you don't give it back to them, you're going to be blackballed throughout the entire East Coast. So I found the money one way or another and sent it to them. And they sent me back a, you know, a couple hundred cases of products that I couldn't use because they were over a year old. And of course, they never ordered again. I lost the brokers there afterwards. And one bad thing led to another until I got a fax. Yes, we had fax machines back in the uh, late 90s. And the fax was from the San Francisco Culinary Academy. And they invited me to uh, purchase a booth, a 10 by 10 booth at the first annual San Francisco Culinary uh, Street Festival. And I paid $100. Thank goodness it was a cheap booth back then. I didn't have a tent. I didn't have an umbrella. I went there with, I'm sure I had a probably some kind of silly bed sheet for a, for a tablecloth that was just ridiculous. But I took about 25 cases of our products of the dressings and marinades from back then. And I sampled them. They were $4 a bottle, three for $10. And after the one day fest was over, I had sold a thousand dollars of product. And it was absolutely a godsend because that showed me that there were venues that I could actually sell our products because people liked them. They just needed to sample them. And that's what got us going. And eventually uh, we, I said, I need more of this. And of course, the same festival wasn't going to happen until a year later. And someone said, you know, you should really start off with by going to some local farmers markets. 
And that's how the turnaround happened by starting at the Healdsburg Farmer's Market, just an hour north of San Francisco. And that one farmer's market became a second, a third, a fourth, and the turnaround began. So that's where we'll leave it for today. So the business continued. Thank goodness. Yeah. Now, finally, our last recipe is from a young, nice young lady, Susan Xanthos. And uh, she's from North Carolina. And this is a um, mashed potatoes with cabbage and onions. So it's four to six potatoes, Yukon gold or russet, cooked and mashed. One sweet onion, a bag of shredded cabbage. Now we found an angel hair coleslaw from Fresh Express. This worked out absolutely beautiful. So I highly recommend this. And... And then uh, four tablespoons of the garden dill mustard balsamic, a half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, and pepper to taste. Now you peel and cook the potatoes until they're soft. Mash a little bit with either plant milk or potato water. Saute the one onion. When it becomes translucent, add the bag of pre-shredded cabbage, and she prefers the angel here that we have. Saute until uh, slightly softened. Add the garden dill, mustard seed, balsamic, turmeric, and pepper. Stir and mix into the mashed potatoes and enjoy. And you can also enjoy the cabbage mixture over uh, the potatoes, as, over the, the final dish. And here is the final dish. Thank you very much. So, Susan, that's another wonderful recipe. Potato salads are just begging for the garden dill, mustard seed. So that's pretty much uh, often the, the balsamic of choice. But I understand, Chef, you're a big fan of the curry balsamic on your potatoes. Is that right? Well, I like the curry on my rice dishes. So what do I like on oh, potatoes? Rice. I like, you know, um, I, I think sweet heat is really good on potatoes. Uh, that's the, that's our favorite. Uh, Ethel and I, we use sweet heat pretty much every day. And speaking of sweet heat, Ethel last night walked in the door and she said, Thomas, have you ever seen this in your life? And I said, what are you talking about? She said, the habaneros are generally beautiful orange. And she showed me a bag of absolutely rose red habanero peppers. I mean, almost they literally were the color of these roses here. They were gorgeous. They were fresh as can be, but they were dark red. And I'd never seen them before. Have you ever heard of uh, red habanero peppers? No, that sounds lovely. So, and, and Ethel said that there are also white habanero peppers uh, available. And I thought, well, more something else I would never expect to see are white habanero peppers. So I don't know if they're hotter or milder than the orange ones, but we made our sweet heat today uh, with the red ones. And we tried it. We said, just in case the peppers were even hotter than the orange ones, we, um, we, we tried it after one batch and said, oh, this tastes just like normal. So we were very grateful for that. But, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get at the, at the stores because, hey, Thomas, you know, this. Hmm. I noticed you got the old on process. Nick, can you come over? I'll give you a new one. Oh, as a matter of fact, we Ethel just said, tell Chef AJ, we just ordered her book, which we oh, did this you. morning. I so should have given thank you, you. while you were here, but thank you. You know, Thomas, I started a meetup group called Healthy Living in Lincoln with Chef AJ. If anybody oh, nice. is local, wants to join it, it's free or wants to travel. And somebody just left a comment in the meetup group named Kim. She said, I thought I'd share that I found a local store in Placerville that sells California balsamic. They have a pretty decent oh. selection. The name of the store is Lighthouse located on Main Street. Are you familiar? Do you sell there? We do. We have a, we have a handful <laughs> of stores that carry our product. Maybe seven or eight stores nationwide. Most of them are small mom and pop shops uh, that we encourage them to use the little squeeze bottle, we actually will give a store these little bottles so that they can sample a couple drops on a spoon for anyone who's interested in our products. And that works out fabulous for, you know, small stores. We got into Whole Foods uh, 
10, 12 years ago, that bombed horribly. Large store, didn't sample at all. Our flavors were either on the top shelf or the bottom shelf. And after four months, we didn't sell a single bottle. So we don't want to be in large stores at all. We only want to be in small mom and pop shops that have that will take the time to use the squeeze bottles, shake them up really well and get them all blended, and then just put a couple of drops on a spoon to anyone who requests a sample of it. That's what works. And that's why we've been, we've been doing festivals for the last 22, 23 years is because people got to sample them all. And, and that's what works. That's what, that's how uh, John Robbins made Baskin Robbins successful when he was a kid. He told me he was the one that invented the pink spoon samples. Oh my gosh. We actually would go to Baskin and Robbins stores asking to buy spoons. If we ran out at an event, we said, where's an ice cream store? Let's Google. Let's, let's look in maps for an ice cream store, go there and beg to buy some, some small spoons from them that we would be using at our, our events out there. That's, oh, that's so funny, but they work beautifully. And we've been, you can use one spoon and sample as many flavors uh, as you want, you know, with little spoons out there. So uh, he was, he was right on. I imagine he became fairly successful. Yep. He walked away from the Baskin Robbins fortune, but he became successful in his own right. But he said he was the one that had the idea to do that. And at first his dad said, no, we can't give away free ice cream, but that if people can, if people, if they try, they'll buy. Absolutely. I've been working for decades. Anyone who goes to Costco and sees all the things that they're sampling every day, uh, sampling works and we'll always, uh, as long as we're doing festivals, we'll be sampling our, our products. So that's a good thing. So let's see. Next month, the flavor of the day is, drum roll, premium classic balsamic. Or that the, be the easy straight for balsamic. Yeah. Yep. And because oh, we'll have um, uh, the garden in the backyard has uh, some tomatoes growing on it now. One of the favorite things to do is to take a couple of uh, cute little cherry tomatoes, put a couple of drops on it and pop it in your mouth. Ethel will take the little squeeze bottle into the backyard, put a few drops on a fresh, just picked tomato and then pop it in your mouth with some uh, classic balsamic on there. So it's a wonderful thing. So if you have any recipes with your classic balsamic, please send it to orders at CaliforniaBalsamic.com. If you can take a picture of it, fine. But if not, then we'll make the recipe and take a picture of it at, at home. But if you have one, that's better. And uh, if you if your um, if your recipe is featured on the broadcast, you'll get two complimentary eight ounce samples of your choice. So that's a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. Let me read a comment from where did it go rita says my favorite is the basil or basil on potatoes and cj says the habanero is so good on roasted cabbage steaks can't not that everybody has their own favorites we had a young lady over the weekend her favorite was lavender balsamic they said Ooh, lavender balsamic. and that's literally you the only flavor i didn't like in your line yeah, it's probably the least popular, but there are always a handful of people who absolutely love it. And I say, okay, I'm glad that's what makes the world go wrong. Variety is that spice. So all is good. Well, I think California balsamic vinegar is the spice of life, if you ask me. <laughs> so, Chef, you're a very bright young lady. And if, uh, I only and wish you were coming to, this, to the Harvest Veg Fest in Sacramento. Yeah, said so depending on our schedule, it's easier said than when is that festival? When, when is that it, event? I'll look it up, but I think it's in December. And while I look it up, Susan says mm. she hasn't tried the lavender, but what would you use it on? I would imagine salads or vegetables. You know, as long as you like the flavor of lavender, then you'd be able to use that or the sparkling water. Um, I guess you could put it on some fresh fruit. Um, but again, lavender is something that I love to smell, but I, the flavor of it is, you know, unusual. So here, I found some events. Can you come near me on November 18th is the harvest festival in Sacramento on uh, August 6th, harvest day in Fair Oaks. And on September 30th, the Elk Grove pumpkin festival. Maybe you can come to some of those. I, we definitely will be at the Sacramento Harvest Festival in November. This will be our 20th year. So you're going to be at the Harvest for, Festival? 
oh, we always go to the Harvest Festival. Isn't, isn't that, that is that always just, on our schedule. Isn't that yep. what I just said? I wish yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. Oh my gosh. We are signed up in booth 805, the same that's, booth we have every Nove year. November 18th to 20th. Can you get me a press that pass? That is correct. Get me a press pass be, I, and I'll, uh, I'll do a little live from your booth and get that's people. That's it, Chef. Your, your complimentary pass will be uh, waiting for you at the will call desk. You know what I'll have do? Is no I'm gonna, fear. I'm going to schedule this as a meetup so people know to come. Nice. Oh, yeah, wow. generally, uh, Tammy always shows up to that uh, event every year because she lives so close to you, uh, just outside of uh, Sacramento. 18, 19, and 20th, we'll be there. And Ooh. the San Mateo show is the weekend before. And and then we'll be at, at the Harvest Festival in uh, Pomona the first weekend in December. But December is one of our all-time busiest months. We will only do the one show at the beginning of December uh, because we've done it for so many years. But that'll be pretty much it. We'll be buried uh, with Christmas orders, as we always are. Wow. Well, glad I'll get to see you. That's fantastic. That will be fun. Wow. Is there a lemon I could put in my water? You bet. The lemon is delicious in club soda. It makes lemon, it makes an yep. Italian soda. Simply lemon is one of our all time most popular flavors that we ship out every day. Um, you know, the flavors that are in the Chef AJ sampler, those in general are the most popular five because we send out the sampler to so many people when they first try it. And then they see what they like. They get their two little free samples as well. And uh, then they can order larger bottles. But we always recommend to keep the little three ounce bottles that are part of the sampler. If you like the flavor, refill the little bottle with a bigger bottle. So it's just so convenient to have these little three ounce bottles. Give them a good shake up and down like that. And then when it's empty, get a big bottle and you can refill this several times. So super simple. Wow. Where are you going to stay when you attend the Harvest Festival? Generally, we stay uh, at a hotel within uh, just a mile or so of the event because it's uh, it, the traffic getting to and from the event um, coming down the business 80 is a nightmare Friday and Saturday mornings. It is just backed up beyond belief. So that's uh, that's something that you won't enjoy. But um because the traffic in India was nothing compared to what you're going to see uh, on I-80 uh, going to Sacramento from where you are in Lincoln. It's it's not pretty. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll still make the trip. Or I'll come right after the show. And uh, any chance you'll be too tired to come for dinner that night? We might be able to do that. It'd be a wonderful thing, Chef. It'd be I'll a wonderful you, thing. I'll, I'll make something with California balsamic vinegar. You've got me a reservation for two. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. So guys, he really does give away two free bottles in the flavor of your choice. If he chooses your recipe to show on Chef AJ Live and he has a regular slot the first Tuesday of the month. All, All right. good, Chef. Thank you so much. Okay, Tommy. Good luck bowling tonight. Get a perfect game. <laughs> if I get a 300, I'll let you know next month. <laughs> nice. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow, an hour later of the regular showtime at noon, when Michelle Vilsick from the NHA will be demonstrating pineapple chickpea Hawaiian haystacks, which I bet if she took a little of your pineapple balsamic and drizzled over the top would be even better. Well said. Take care. Bye, Tommy. Bye, Ethel. All right.